Blessings and wonderful kingdom greetings to you today. Thank you for tuning in to listen to this broadcast from Dynamic Life Ministries. Today we have a beautiful message from Velma Bat talking about the pathway of miracles. Let's go across and join the service as we start. Trust you'll enjoy it. Trust you'll be blessed. And God will richly bring the word to life in your heart. Enjoy. Thank you, Gift and Mouse. We love and appreciate you so much. It's just so much different with you in our, in our house. There's such a sweet presence here. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you that we can come and just say this morning that there is something brand new in the atmosphere. Amen. Lord, we just came through Purim. We know that this week was the week of Purim. We you took care of the Hamans, Lord. And Lord, it's interesting. Last week, Pastor Eddie was teaching on <laughs> interruptions and interferences. To quiet down and have time. And Lord, if I think of this week. Ooh, eh, eh. But Lord, thank you that your peace that surpasses all understanding will be with us this morning. Lord, and as we unpack one verse this week. Just one verse. Let us be in so much awe of who you are after this one verse. Thank you for each one that's here. Thank you, Father God, that there will be no interference this morning. Thank you, Lord, that our ears and our hearts and our spirit man are open, receptive for what you want to share with us. Lord, I speak life over everyone here. Lord, I speak life over their marriages. I speak life over those that is trusting you for a life partner. I speak life over the, those that need to make career changes and they are trusting you for an outcome that is actually too great and too big for them to fathom with their heads. Lord, those that need, need some financial breakthrough, thank you, Lord, that you are a God of provision. You are not just the God of the vision. You are the God also of the provision for the vision. Thank you, Father God, that you are our source. We declare it over this place. Lord, thank you that we can really say this morning, we are in awe of you for what you have done on the cross, what you have done on, and, and you overcame and you rose up from the grave. Jesus, we are just in awe of you. Thank you that you made every promise come to, come to maturity. And that we don't need to doubt you in the way we walk with you. Lord, I come against the spirit of rejection in this place this morning. Thank you that all those ten tentacles we sometimes put out that make us feel rejected and not good enough. I come against that and I break it in this place this morning. Lord, because the opposite of rejection is adoption. And Lord, that spirit is the spirit that operates in something that is beyond understanding. To know that I'm in my family this morning. Lord, where your word go out today worldwide. Lord, I just speak life over your word. Lord, thank you for a spiritful tongue-talking church here in Littleton Centurion. Thank you that we can run into your sanctuary and know that you are indwelling here. Lord, thank you for your amazement. And we honor you this morning. Papa, you're welcome in this service. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. You can try to take your seats. Okay. It's actually always for me amazing. When you start and... And you unpack one verse. Because that's sometimes that take me two, three weeks to unpack one verse. So, Apostle D said to us to go and read on the group 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19. I need you to open your word there this morning. I really want us to open our word there. There's just something. Yesterday I was busy building today what I need to speak and at one stage Derek just wanted to go and lie down 10 minutes 
and he got to the bed and he couldn't lie nowhere because there's two types of Bibles open. There's some books I'm doing research in. There's some, and that is how I enjoy one scripture. Amen. That's really how God wants us to enjoy his word. Amen. So I just want to read 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19. But I just want to say this morning, thank you for the opportunity to talk in the house. Thank you that you came. Thank you that you are open this morning for uh, uh, the revelation God gave me. And I hope it encouraged you to go and dig even deeper into this one verse. Because this is such a profound word, uh, verse. Um, our apostle loves um, Isaiah 60, 61 and 62. But I must say, this is now one of my favorite verses. Because it's really, for me, our journey from, from God knocking and seeking after us until we walk into the sanctuary. It is that journey that is in one verse captured. And that is what we are going to walk through. What God is bra breaking it up into three areas for me. And that is the three areas I want to unpack with you this morning. So, um, I also want to honor um, Pastor Eddie for last week's word. It's very interesting, as I said, when you talk about um, those stuff that take attention of the Lord, how amazing interfering week we had. I mean, um, I asked um, Eddie, how was your week? He said, blessed. Because, you know, if I say anything else, it's just not going to go well. And that's after Frick had him by hand. And, you know, I, um, I'm just like someone will ask you, how are you doing? You just say, I'm healthy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm healthy. Okay? So that's where we are. Um, I'm going to um, read uh, it, the whole verse through. And then I'm going to unpack it with you. Now set, set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Therefore arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God. To bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy articles of God into the house. That is to be built for the name of the Lord. Amen. Now I want to really strip this little verse into f different areas because it totally blew my mind. I didn't know that it's possible to get actually a verse to understand from where God starts doing that until you start seeking Him. Because God knocks, but it's us that needs to open the door many times. And that seeking, I want to unpack with you this morning. So, the first portion of the seeking so this specific scripture is really a good indicator of how God built and established a relationship with us and I will unpack every area so that you can see where the seeking start and how God cleanses us and then how God establishes us in his presence and that you can walk it out for the rest of your life. Because we have a mandate, we have a mantle. But many of us come to the place where we seek and we say, yes, Jesus. But we never go through the purification process and then we never establish a, a relationship. We know about God, but do we really know, you know, know Him relationally? So let's, uh, let's unpack. God placed a hunger in us to seek Him. So firstly, I want to read Matthew 6 verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Now for me personally, I really battle to understand how the seeking is working. Because how, how do you go and seek the Lord? Because when I was growing up and I was in the church I was, I didn't see founding. That people actually found him. That it wasn't just knowledge, but it was a relationship. And it scared me in a sense to think that people have knowledge here, but I don't see the fruit 
in their lives. And I think that is many times where confusion come in, in the Christian walk. There's, there's people that testify and they say, we look at the Christians, but we don't see the fruit. And Ria said a very interesting thing Friday afternoon. She said, what is sin? And it's basically everything in the word of God that you are not doing. But God says that you are not doing. That is for me a scary place. We have work to do. We really have work to do. So, um, that is then, but, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Then I found the next portion of of unpacking seeking now sorry but this is now a portion I found in this Bible of mine in Matthew 6 verse 33 it's about this verse that we just read here now they unpack it lacquer they says this is the pathway of miracles sure. the moment that you start seeking it is a pathway of miracles that God is opening in your life. It says here, putting God's kingdom first is the first step on the pathway of God's miracles. And you cannot walk on this pathway unless determining His will, His purpose and glory as your first priority as you pursue His call on your life. To do so, turn first to His word which is the atmosphere in which you may understand his will, recognize his way, and hear the voice of his spirit. That is Psalm 119 verse 18. Secondly, watch for the little things, the little signs along the way, not in the great wind, the earthquake, or fire, but rather in the still, small voice. 1 Kings 19 verse 11 to 13. Often it is the small, seemingly insignificant things or events that ultimately, ultimately determine our destiny. Yeah. Now, as I was reading that, I just realized that to see God is a journey. But unfortunately, not all of us understand how He, he seeks you. You know, people will stand at a cancer journey. They will just see, this is a curse, it must be a bloodline thing, it must be this and it must be that, or I must be out of my house in three weeks' time, the landlord didn't give me proper time frames, now I need to get immediately new residence, and it's chaos in my home, and everyone is screaming actually at everyone. And you stand there, and you think, okay, so house, what is house? House is a dwelling of the presence of the Lord. Lord, where do you need our household to move? You were most probably speaking once with us, but somehow we miss your indicators. You know, the Holy Spirit is so sensitive. Must you must be so sensitive for His voice. He sometimes just brings that <sighs> into your spirit, man. Now, there's a series I love to watch, and I don't get often time to watch any movies. But Heartlands is a movie on Netflix. I love horses, and it's a combination of all the amazing things. And I was standing in the bathroom last night after a very busy day. And I thought, oh, I would love to now just watch Heartlands. Horses, soft, blue mountains. Nyaka. And I came into the living room and yeah, he sits. I'm like, what's on? He said, look here. And Heartlands has a new series. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I asked my daddy now in the bathroom, can I please watch Heartlands tonight? And he opens the movies and yes, Heartlands new series. What's the odds? That's the whole thing is, can you now imagine, for me, that had a desire last night to watch Heartland, Daddy had to, for months now, have them prepare and shoot the movie and gun on and, re you know, do all the things so that Velma can have a hard desire last night 
for daddy can I please watch Heartlands tonight do you understand that that is what God wants to come and develop and impart in us we got so stuck on the blues and the negative of where we find ourselves but in a sense God has got something amazing that he wants to break open in your life but are we vigilantly living that we we just read that word what is it the pathway of miracles are you looking for those miracles I mean I had a dream this week of rhinos now listen they are one of my favorites and I was walking in this dream between these two massive mountains and the owner of the farm were just in the he said we're not going to drive we're going to feel it and walk it and we love the bush so we were walking and we came around this two mountains I mean I literally said in creation this is the most amazing beautiful place I've ever been in my life and and he he was there and we were literally like a group walking and the next moment my eye caught something here on the left three rhino calves literally this size coming around the corner and he was talking and not looking and I stopped him I said just step back look and he stepped back and the next moment a group appears here that come and feed those little rhinos so that the tourists can see them and here this little calf is come and they suck those milk that there is burrows coming out of their mouths and the, the, the group that came to feed those little calves said to Derek, won't you bring us a word? All our staff is here. Just walk with us. All of them are. And we got there and here is all these international guests in this lodge. And all I'm doing the whole time is I'm walking with base of, of, of makeup. And if there's a spot on them, I put this on. But as I put it on, it's gone it's like source that is on them and I and I woke up and I'm like yeah not daddy but this is a lot of detail now I can't remember what rhino means can you remember please look quickly but what it basically come that God is busy raising up the next generation and he's telling me Velma they still on bottles they drink a little bit of milk so that the scheme come out of their mouth but he also said to me the man that was the owner of that farm was him we were walking with him in his presence and the fact that we came to this lodge ministering to this group of tourists and staff we were cleaning them of sicknesses of rejection of hurt of everything just Now, will you please get my book? Just want to, sorry, Leon. This is our house, so we can have a... But what was significantly for me is the meaning of these small rhinos. And I said to Derek when, when we were unpacking this dream, you know, that is what makes God so amazing. He encouraged me and Derek by a dream. He wants to encourage you. He wants to walk with you but you need to seek him now let's get back to Matthew 22 verse 37 to 40 the great commandment Jesus said to him sorry Matthew 22 verse 37 to 40 for those that want to turn there I'm just going to read the first portion I'm concentrating now in 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19 while you are looking for Matthew 22 verse 37 to 40 now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God now that with your heart and your soul immediately this verse popped up Jesus said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind this is the first and the great commandment. Did you get it? 
No, 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 the dream book. Yeah, it's sorry, Lian. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Yeah, bring the library. Um, this is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So there's a portion that you and I need to go with, with everything in us. Be so seeking, so because God wants you to find Him. One of the greatest indicators that we are growing in our relationship with God, thank you Scott, is found in our willingness to love. I'm going to say this again. One of the greatest indicators that we are growing or found God in our relationship with God is, to find, to found, is found in our willingness to love. And I'm telling you, this week I had to work on my love skills. There was just a lot of things going on. But it is so wonderful when you realize that I found Him. And in Him, no matter the circumstances, no matter what, I found Him. But you know what? There was a, a stage where I really felt I'm never going to find Him. Really, I see people telling me, now I hear the Lord saying this, and the Lord is showing them that. And I'm looking at that, and I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. I couldn't fathom that He wants to speak with you and me. Now, let's just read here what rhinos mean. It's so cute, they write here, rhinoceros. Defend territory. A strong person who will fiercely and persistently defend the Lord's interests. So what God is busy building in each one of you, and I don't call you calves, and I don't say you all on milk, but listen, God is speaking to us as leaders to know where He is busy. He's raising up a strong person who will fiercely and persistently defend the Lord's, in Lord's interest. So whatever he's busy building into your lives, he's busy a fierceness, he's busy building a strongness and a fierceness in you. We as the women are busy doing a series on all the um, guarding positions. We are not, we have done one now. And one of the two things that really stood out for me was that we need to start prophesying into our future. Amen. Amen. Praying into our future. Praying into the future of this ministry. Praying into our family's future. God taught me this years ago. He said to me, get an empty book like this. And I wrote my children's names at the top in January. And, he, and I sat with him. I said, what do you want me to prophesy into the year? And he will give me scripture and he will give me a vision or a dream or whatever in that time. And that is what I prayed into that whole year. At the end of the year, I made a space here where I can say, answered prayer. God did this, God did that, God did that. For 12 years of my children's career of school, that is what I was praying into them. And you know... If you think of the detail that God wants you to speak into your future, we are, we are slap. We are not doing it. We as church are the whole time busy unpacking yesterday, unpacking yesterday, unpacking yesterday, and history, and it's so gach and it's so terrible. But the moment that we realize but we have a vision and we have a generational God that is our king, he did not change the word he spoke over you at the foundation of this earth was laid. And we sometimes forget to go in and speak the future. I mean, I said, Lord, there will not be an accident again in Selborne Avenue. Blah. I went with my oil. Poor robots. We had so many accidents here. Children being hit by motor cars. Never again. After I did that, there was never an accident again. Yeah. 
Marty had a little bit of a bump, but everyone was fine. There was just a scratch on the vehicle. No one died because we, had, we lost children down this road. But we had to take authority in the spirit. But as church, God says, come on now. Our next one that I want to unpack with you is the second portion of 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19. Therefore arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God. Who is the sanctuary? I want you to stand up and then we say this again to each other. Who is, where is God's sanctuary? Come on. The Holy Spirit is indwelling in you. Do you realize that you are a carrier of God's anointing? Wherever you step, you bring a different spirit into the atmosphere. Are you operating in a different spirit? Or are you blah, 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 blah? Because we are not that. You can sit down. Sorry, I'm giving you lack of exercise. Therefore, arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God. I'm going to read the song. It is the song of um, Dirksen wrote this one. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold and precious silver. Purify my heart. Let me be as gold, pure gold. Refine as fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy. Set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy. Set apart for you, my master ready to do your will. Purify my heart. Cleanse me from within. Make me holy. Purify my heart. Cleanse me from my sin deep within. Refine as fire. My heart's desire is to be holy. Set apart for you, Lord. I choose to be holy. This process is not easy. I'm going to read the second portion of 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19 again. Therefore arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord God. You know what this building means? This means sometimes that God needs to go in our foundations and rebuild our foundations. When I made, uh, made um, this amazing awesomeness of mine, it was for me amazing. He said to me, he's 40 years in ministry. And the Lord immediately showed me all Derek did in 40 years was laying foundation. He was digging in and digging in and digging in and he was just laying foundation on foundation. The buildings that is coming is to start being built now. Amen. And that is the whole thing here is, is what is in your and my foundations? What are you allowing God into that foundations of yours? Or you say, no, Lord, this is too ana. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to put my resignation in somewhere. I don't know where that resignation can be given in, but I'm going to resign now. This is just too painful. But you know, this is the times where you hear people say, I'm in a desert. I'm in a storm. They give names to this. They, 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 they say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going through a test. Now it's actually a trial. Now it's actually this. It's a, they, they give names to this. I at once I said to the Lord, where am I finding me in all this? And he showed me how I have been spewed out on an island after a storm, lying there with my face in the sand. So don't underestimate storms and tests and stuff. But this is the period where God comes and He purifies you and me. He comes and He purifies your actions. He shows you things you speak. He shows you th people you thought, oh, I forgave them long ago. In that time, He shows you this. He comes and He washes you and washes you. The best description of this stage is you came to the Lord and your robe is white. Amen. But there's some crinkles in your, in your outfit. And I don't know about you years ago, and I've given this example before. We had these white tablecloths that were so hard. They put it in some kind of white thing. 
and then they have to use very warm irons to get all that wrinkles out. Now this is that time. Oh, we have a word in Afrikaans, heiligmaking. You know, it's those people that come every Sunday and they give their heart again and again and again to the Lord. But no one's taking them aside and telling them, listen, you have a white robe. God is just purifying your heart. It's not you that didn't give your life to the Lord. You are in process too. You are in the second portion of 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19. The purifying testing time. Is this an easy time? Listen guys, I said, <laughs> Alda always talk about the mountain. Oh, I'm going around the mountain. Hey, I'm going around the mountain. It's literally for me a stage when I felt, Lord, am I ever going to get out of this time? But she gave me some hope one day when I was again going around the mountain. She said to me, you're going higher and higher every time that you pass the same point on that mountain. And it's not about you're getting promoted. Listen, when you want to go higher, I know the best way down, uh, higher is down. And that is on your face before the King of Kings. So I just want to see if I've missed anything here. I'm happy with this area. So I don't want to, to stay too long there. That's also why I said this morning, we need to testify and start proclaiming the future that we want to see. When last did you stand in your house and said, Lord, this household will be one of joy. This household will be a, a household with always a future a vision. This household will be a household that forgive easy. This household will be a household that have wonderful meals around the table discussing you. This household will see many people giving their lives to you just because they sit around a bread table. When last did you speak life over health? I mean, it was so sad for me. A friend of mine went through a double mastectomy, 16 chemos. She was for two weeks scared to tell her Christian friends that she's got cancer. Because she wasn't ready to be judged and condemned by them. When she told me, all I did is I opened my arms and I held her. And we wept like babies on each other's shoulders. Today she's totally healed and restored. But you know, I just realized there, how scary is that? that I cannot come to my family because I will be judged and condemned by my family. We are so scared to be rejected that I will rather reject them before they can even reject me. God has got a plan with your life. Come on. And we need to come at a place as a family where we open our hearts and our doors again for each other and say, you know what? I really want to sit with you. I don't know you well, but can we drink a cup of tea together? Because you are on my heart. And that is really the, the thing for me. And I'm getting lack off my sign here. The next portion of this verse. And this is the place where I really got into a rabbit hole or six. To bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And the holy articles of God into the house. That is to be built for the name of the Lord. This is your portion where you start to be trained by God for the call on your life. Now I'm going to totally go into symbolisms and prophetic things so that you can understand how significant this covenant building ark, ark of the covenant is really. So I went and I made a study of the Ark of the Covenant. What was in it? What was the size of it? And I'm not going to be religious in this. I just want to share with you that you can see what God has built into your life, into your call and your destiny until now. So that you can get hope and get faith back and stand up into what God has called you. So firstly... 
I want to talk about the mercy seed of God. Many people know about it, but before I go to the mercy seed, I want to give some facts about the Ark of Covenant. The Ark of Covenant was one of the most instrumental symbols of faith and God's presence. The contents of which included the table of the Mosaic law, a pot of manna, and the rod of Aaron. Now this is where Valma totally got into a rabbit hole. Because I asked the Lord, okay, why a pot of manna? I want to know, what is the symbolism? Manna, to remind God's chosen of how he sustained them after the exodus from Egypt. Okay, bring that home. Because you are, this is the Ark of Covenant. The presence of Holy Spirit dwells here. Ne? So God wants to remind you this morning of how he sustained and how he looked after you. Remember that. Make a note of this. That God has placed in the Ark of Covenant manna to remind you and me that he will provide for you. Some of us need to hear this. You look at your budget and you think, oh, eh, eh. How is that minus and that plus going to ever meet each other? And it's miraculously to see how God just brings what is necessary into your house. Even if that means I need to wear second-hand clothes for a while, God will provide for you. God will provide for you. Now we're going to um, the rod of Aaron. Now this is where Valma totally lost the bus because I was so excited. So let's, let's just look at the size of the Ark of Covenant, the dimensions and the features of it. Then we will go back to that rod of Aaron. It says here it's two and a half cubits in length. That's 114.3 centimeters. I had to get it in centimeters because inches and that stuff doesn't make sense to me. And then the broad was one and a half cubit. That is 68.58 centimeters. I thought it is much bigger. Sorry, but I really thought it's pretty bigger. So it says here, the ark was overlaid inside and out with pure gold with a molding of gold around it. For transportation, the ark had four rings of gold with two rings on each side. A pole of acacia wood overlaid with gold was placed into the rings to carry the ark. These poles for transportation were to be permanently fixtures and never removed. So let's think a little bit of that. God sometimes needs you there. Your gifting, your calling, your anointing. Then he moves you. You moan, nyaka, 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 nyaka. But it's actually inside of you's poles. The Holy Spirit to move you where God needs you. Are you moving where God needs you to move? Because we sometimes miss the moves that God makes in our lives. I mean, when me and Daddy got married, we both were like a May that year. We said to the Lord, thank you. Then it's you and me for the rest of our lives. We can lock up and go our homes. We can travel all over the world and we can bring the good news to whosoever. And then July we met. And God said in October to both of us, there's your husband. And he said to Derek, there's your wife. Now I can say, Nia sorry, Yara, I told you in May, not happening. It's me and you for the rest of my life. I said to the Lord, I'm not interested, leave a message after the beep. I literally did that. I said, I'm not going to get hurt, I'm not going to. Next, I walked alone nine years and I'm a very happy divorced woman. But the ark needed to move. The ark needed to move. Because God knew what this is all about. Because this is that. And God needed to do something. But if I, I both of us said, ark not moving, sorry, ne. God sometimes needs to move you. And I'm telling you, change is hard. So then the mercy seed 
was where God would dwell. He said, there above the cover between the two cherubims that are over the ark of the covenant law, I will meet with you and give you all of my commands for the Israelites. This is in Exodus 25 verse 22. You can go and read this. The two angels that were on top of the ark, they say here the most amazing thing, the symbolizing of these two angels, attention and readiness to do God's will. Okay, so where are we with that? Derek has, a, has words that he said, are you in the perfect will, the acceptable will? What's that scripture? The good will. Where are you in your journey to find God's will for your life? God's perfect blueprint plan will for your life. And that means you and I sometimes have to look in the mirror and realize, listen, I've got work to do. For me personally, I know God wants me to write books. That is why I'm now busy studying what we are studying in the Bible school. Because it's not that, the, that I need some book knowledge to write what God has given me for years now to write down as he's speaking. But the world needs a certificate. So now I'm busy doing this certificate. So that when my books are on the shelves, it is someone that is credentialed by the world. Isn't that sad? But that's the fact of the, sto the story. But for me to carry that out, it means Valma has to sit early in the mornings. Fridays, I'm busy listening to a woman that is speaking so high up, I sometimes have to listen three times to the same teaching and make notes to just understand what this woman is all about. But God blessed that woman because he is trained and he's training me for a time like this because I'm going to need it. But that means Valma needed to be in a readiness to do God's will. We don't always see why I have to work at this place. Nyaka nyaka, why do I have to work here? I'm so good qualified. Why am I working almost down on what my qualification or my training is? But then at the end of the day you see, just zip it and walk this out so that God can train you what he needs to train you here. I had to do many people's books to understand how to do this ministry's book. To be diligent in it, to be honest in it, to do the right thing and to, to be accountable before the king of kings so that I can walk out what I needed to. But I had to do a four years internship to, to finish my training with auditors so that I can be qualified enough to do your and our king's books. But it meant that I needed to be ready to do God's will in my life. Was it hard to work for a boss? Absolutely. It's very hard for me. Because she, they totally saw me as a threat. I had 15 years my own companies. Now I have to work as, ja, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> it was a hard assignment. But I, I realize I need to be in the will of the Lord to get that training so that God can trust me with the kingdom finances. You understand? We have things that we need to work on. Just want to see if I'm finished now. Okay. So this mercy seat is literally where those two angels' um, wings and between the, the top of this, there's the mercy seat. That means that's the indwelling presence of the Lord that was there. Now, in, in the Old Testament, you get it so visibly that this cloud were there, and they were so scared to go into that Holy of Holies because they, if they were with spots and wrinkles, they would soon come out dead. There was a rope around their leg that if they don't hear the clockies anymore, the, the bells, they pull him by feet out. He's dead there. Because you don't mess with the presence of the Lord. That is why the Lord says, He allows a lot of things, but don't sin against the Holy Spirit. God is quite intensely 
about the Holy Spirit. There were so many days I apologized towards the Holy Spirit. I said, I don't know how you do it. Because sometimes I hear myself speak. And I thought to myself, hi, Holy Spirit, and you had to hear that. Sorry, ne. Because I never want to hurt the heart of the Holy Spirit. God's very protective about the Holy Spirit. Very. Okay, so we have done that. Now we are going to go into the stuff that makes me excited. You see how it looks? So let's go into this. I asked the question, why the rod of Aaron were placed in the ark? Why was, why was the rod there? I don't know about you, I haven't read up on it yet. So, number 17 verse 8. It says there that in one evening, it brought forth, put forth buds, it produces blossoms, and it bear ripe almonds. Now the question there at this spot was that there was leaders that stood up and said, why is Aaron and Moses chosen by God? What makes them so special? And God's wrath came a little bit in there. And the earth literally opened and swallowed those households. But unfortunately, that wasn't enough for them to break the rebellion. They kept on rebelling. And God doesn't enjoy rebellion. So if there's rebellion in your life, ask the Lord to expose it and deal with rebellion. I'll show them. I can do this on my own. Rebellion has got a, a, a root that's very bad. You have actually an independent spirit. And God said, be part of a family. So, let's go on. So what happened then is God said, all 12 tribes... You bring a rod. They walk with a rod. You bring that rod. The 12 tribes is going to lie in the, in the sanctuary. And then after a night, they got back because God says, that those that was chosen by me, these will have buds and fruit on it. Now, you can imagine... A rod of that type was dead. It was a dead piece of wood. And the next day, Levi, with a tribe that had blossoms on it, it had actually almonds on it in one night. And God actually got the attention there. That is, that is the whole thing here is. Shepherds use rods to guide, to correct their flock. Psalm 23 verse 4. So what's interesting, and I didn't know it, I thought all these places is where Moses' staff were used, his rod. But actually, God showed me different. In Exodus 7, verse 8 to 10, Aaron's rod was, were, were thrown down, changed into a snake. And Aaron's rod ate the king's snakes. So let's read that. Exodus 7 verse 8 to 10. I didn't know it. I thought, yeah, they've got something wrong here. And it's literally that. I was actually because cooked. 8 to 10. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron saying, when Pharaoh speak to you, saying, show a miracle for yourself, then you shall say to Aaron, take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and let it become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron went into Pharaoh, and they did so, just as the Lord commanded. Now you can read further on, his rod actually ate the snakes of Pharaoh's people. Aaron's rod also turned the water into blood. Did you know that? I thought it was Moses' rod. Okay. So Exodus 7. Verse 19 to 21. So it wasn't Moses' rod. Then the Lord spoke to Moses. Say to Aaron, take your rod and stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt. 
over their streams and over their rivers, over their ponds and over all their pools of water, that they may become blood. So know that there is a significance why Aaron's rod was in that ark, is in the ark. Aaron's rod summoned the plagues of the frogs. So in Exodus 8, verse 5 to 6, the Lord spoke to Moses, Say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds. Now, let's go back to 19 to 21. Sorry, I'm almost there. Okay, Exodus 8, verse 5 to 6. There we go. Mm. Yeah. And cause frogs to come up onto the land of Egypt, verse 5 of Exodus 8. So that's quite interesting that the Aaron's staff were used there. And then in Hebrews 9, verse 4, just want to turn this. Sorry, guys. I, I really like us to go into the word more. We really need to get our word base in. Um, Hebrews 9 verse 4. Which had the golden sister and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod, that budded and the ta uh, tables of the co covenant. This is in the New Testament. So there is your, I always like to reference from the Old Testament to the New Testament as well. Okay, so there's your New Testament in Hebrews 9 verse 4. Uh, Aaron's rod was also a reminder that God does not put up with rebellion against himself or his chosen representatives on earth. You can go and read a little bit in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 10. How God speaks there against rebellion. God does not like rebellion. Okay, so there's, there's, um, so then I asked the Lord, why did um, Aaron had an almond staff? I mean, he could have a blue comb one. Why a, a almond, ne? So it's very, very, very interesting what I found. Amandals, almonds. The lampstand of the holy place was a golden lampstand in the tabernacle, was to be shaped in the form of an almond tree with branches, blossoms, and almonds. Exodus 25. Almond means watching. The root Hebrew word for almond means watching. That means this journey that you and I are walking to get into, into this holy place with the Lord. God is watching, but actually watching for me is also protecting. Okay. God used the almond tree to let the people know that he would be observant, watching over his people. Then, amazing, I, I looked this... Um, Eight places in the word that is specifically talking about almonds. It's not a lot. It's just eight places. So I just want to read this one. Luckily I've got a paper in here. Yay. Jeremiah 1 verse 11 to 12. I actually want to start. Yeah. Moreover the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, You have seen well, for I'm ready to perform my word. So what is God actually saying by this, this staff of almond? That God is ready to perform the word over your life. But you and I need to speak the word forth. Are we? I don't know about you. I realized a while back, I've quieted down. We have quieted. Why? Why is the church silent? 
Almonds are a sign from God that is always watching to make his word fruitful. And he also says to bring them through all the stages of growth. God will carry you through every stage that you need to grow. And what's interesting is, and that's why I brought this, we mixed uh, almond oil last year. Was it last year? Was it the previous year? Will you give each one an uh, almond? Hmm? 2020, August. Yeah, I think it was August, September. God laid on our hearts to, to make this almond oil. Now listen, you can look at the oil. What happened is the Lord sent me specifically to a shop. And he said to me when I was in the shop, these tins you choose. And that's the olive base that we are going to use for it. And I came home and they were fraught. They were stale. When I poured them out, you know when oil is old, old it has a smell. And I'm like, serious. Why do I need to have this fraught oil now? And the Lord said to me, I sent you to buy this fraught oil. I said, Daddy, please talk to me. Because he said to us to use almond essence. You can open it and put some on your hand. You will smell the almond in it. He said to us, go and get some almonds. Go and get this. Um, and the Lord said to me, now you go and you buy cinnamon. Sticks. Because the, uh, the, the um, church has become stale. At that time, in lockdown. And the Lord said, like, I, uh, like uh, Moses had to hoi that stick into Mara to turn it into sweet water. This is basically what God did. And he came and he cleansed. Yeah. And he purified. And that is what this oil symbolizes. Also, the almond blossoms first in the year before anything else blossoms in Israel. It blossoms. But also, almond carries the last of all the plants, their fruit. So some of us had a good start, but God says, I'm going to be your good finish as well. And also, the staff that went through blossom to maturity of even carrying an uh, almond, God said there's a quickening coming over the church. And that's why when, when I was with this uh, Aaron staff busy with the almond, I got so excited because it was as if as we were mixing this oil that all of that promise was just filling me. And I was so excited to think that two years ago almost, God said to us, or a year and a half ago, mix this oil. Never did we know that now is the time to actually release it. Now is the time. Because we had a women's day that we organized. We had a, a venue booked for it that can, can do all the protocols of, of COVID. And God just stopped us. He said, you're not going forth with this day. Uh, um, the, the vision that I give for this day, you cannot live it out with all the protocol. Because we would have one session. Then we have to move all the women out of the hall, get a team in to come and sanitize the place. All the fruit had to be wrapped in, in, in wrappings, and we wanted to do a feast table of God's goodness. And you can't do that with this plastic bags between everything. And God just said to us, and the other thing is, God said, I wanted the women to lay in the presence of that quickening that I'm bringing over the church. And we can't lay closer than a meter and a half from each other. So, and God said also we're going to minister prophetic words to the women. Now, a meter and a half from here. Yeah, Poppy, the Lord says, nyaka, nyaka. The Lord literally, we had to stop that function. But this oil remained. And I know why. Because now I know how watchful the, the, the Lord is over your and my journey. He's watchful to see you and I rise up. He wants to bring a quickening in your growth, in your, in your standing up, in your portion. 
as a, a, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we all have a call. We all have. It's actually amazing in Ecclesiastes 12 verse 5. Almonds there, the Hebrew that's used there, is a wakeful hastening. A wakeful hastening. And that is the thing is, we sometimes look at a scripture like this one that we are working through at 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19. We think, you know, Lord, it takes now 13 years. I can't do this anymore. But the Lord said there's a wake, there's, there's a hastening that is released in the spirit. And it also says there in that Ecclesiastic 12 verse 5, it's a divine favor and approval. God has approved you. Do you realize that? You are approved. You have the Jesus stamp on your life. You chose him. Jeremiah 1 verse 11, moving forward and getting things done speedily. There was here as well, ready. That is what Jeremiah 1 verse 12 says, ready. Watching, waking, hastening, anticipating, to be sleepless, alert, vigilant, on the lookout, to care for, watchfully. That is what God is speaking over your life right now. He's watchful over your life. He's not, oh, it's her again. Again. He's not like that. They literally say that almond blossoms start in winter time. Some of you feel, Lord, it is not the right time to start a business now. It's not the right time to start a ministry now. It's not the right time to start doing body ministry. It's not the right time to roll into Bible school. It's not the right time because it looked like winter around you. It's exactly the right time. To that exactly the right time. There's a massive shift, and I want you to go right down if you can. Jeremiah 1 verse 11, Genesis 43 verse 11, Exodus 25 verse 33, Numbers 17 verse 2. I will post it on the group as well. Genesis 30 verse 37, Numbers 17 verse 8. In Exodus 37 verse 19 is the places where God is talking about the almond. Let's get back to our scripture. I'm almost done. So if there's an area in your life that you don't feel things are moving forward. You just see the snow around you. This oil, go and apply it in that area. Go and anoint those areas. Go and start speaking God's uh, Aaron rot, uh, rot into that situation. It's part of your inheritance as a child of the Lord that God wants to bring. Let's read 1 Chronicles 22 verse 19 then from the beginning. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. That means the scripture but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Those that stop seeking, God is telling you this morning, start seeking. Therefore arise and build the sanctuary of the Lord your God. What is that assignment that God gave you to deal with? If you need counseling, organize that. If you are scared to start your business, you feel, I don't have enough training, this is your opportunity. Go and study then that BA degree or whatever you need to be able to do the assignment of God on your life. He is going to cleanse you. He is going to root you on all levels for you to be cleansed and purified and ready for your assignment. But he also says, come on, my child, pick up that rod of yours. And start seeing my budding in that rot. There's really something here. To bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord. And the holy articles of God into the house. That is to be built for the name of the Lord. I want to ask you this morning. This was actually where my ministry actually started. 
when someone asked me, Lord, uh, Velma, did you ever say yes to the Lord for the call on your life? Like, Lord, it is, if it's your will to raise me up as an apostle prophetic seer, then I will take the assignment. Lord, you want me to teach. I will take the assignment and I will teach. Because I fought the Lord on teaching. Say to him, I'm very busy, leave a message. But we need to start teaching those around us. Because God has trained me backsides of the deserts. He did. But sometimes we need to open our mouths and start speaking forth. I want to ask this morning, is there any questions? I spoke a lot this morning. Did you go and study this verse? Yeah. Some of us did. But did you realize that there's so much, so much nuggets in this verse? I'm so grateful, baby, that you said do this verse. Because it really, I just realized there was a place and a, and a, and a wake-up call for myself. That I'm almost like, Lord, you are speaking about revival for years and years now. We mixed the oil in 2020 to bring this hastening, this quickening, this watching back into the body of Christ. But I realized that was a, a oil of a year and a half ago that needs to be released right now. And I really want to say to you, use that oil. Speak that quickening over the brokenness in your marriage. Okay, over over the, the things that you see that's not moving. Because God wants to move on your behalf. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.